channel provides thread stave data structure for passing data asynchronously between a producer of the data and its consumer. Channel was introduced first with .NET Core 3.0 and since then it's been supported and with .NET 7 it is part of the core framework itself and we don't have to add any additional NuGet for it. So for using a channel and using channel readers and writers to communicate data between a producer and a consumer, first we have to create a channel object. And for creating a channel object, we can use the channel class and its static method. So let's declare a channel. And here for creating the new channel, we can use channel dot and channel can be created either bounded channel which means it creates a channel with specified maximum capacity or we can use an unbounded channel which creates a channel usable by any number of readers and writers concurrently so if we use create unbounded and here we can pass the type of the channel that we want to create meaning what kind of data structure the channel is going to keep in our case for this example let's consider string as the data structure and then what we can do is we can either create using the default constructor in which case it will create an unbounded channel usable by any number of readers and writers concurrently. And in the other overload, we can pass an unbounded channel option. So let's use this version. And we can use the unbounded channel option. And as you can see, the unbounded channel option constructor do not take any parameter. So we can pass the properties. So in properties, it has three different properties that we can set. The first one is a Boolean property, allow synchronous continuations. If it is true, if operation performed on a channel may synchronously invoke continuation subscribed to notifications of pending async operation. Setting this property to true can provide measurable throughput improvements by avoiding scheduling additional work items, but it may come with the cost of reduced parallelism in the operation. We're not going to use this property. The property that we can use is single reader and single writer. Single writer, if true, writers to this channel are guarantees that there will only be ever at most one write operation at a time. This is something which might be useful to synchronize the write, where a single reader, if it is true, readers from this channel are guaranteed that there will only be ever at most one read operation at a time. And false if no constraint is guaranteed. Both of them has false by default, and we are going to keep it at that. This is how we can create an unbounded channel. And if we use a create bounded channel, as you can see, we can use create bounded and this is also a generic method. So we can similarly use string as the type. And then for the constructor, we can either give bounded channel options or we can just start with the capacity, which is the maximum capacity that the channel will have. This is the fundamental difference between a bounded and unbounded channel. Unbounded channel do not have any capacity cap, where a bounded channel will have a capacity cap. And then we can have another overload which takes bounded channel option and a item dropped callback. This is a callback function which will be called if an item is dropped. So let's try this version. So we can say new 
bounded options and bounded option constructor we need to pass capacity it is a mandatory constructor parameter so let's pass 100 as capacity and then for the property again we have allow synchronous continuation the capacity we have already set single reader is same as the create unbounded option which is it will guarantee only one reader read operation at a time single writer similarly guaranteeing only one write operation at a time and then there is something called full mode so full mode is basically if the channel becomes full what would be the action that it need to perform by default it will have weight which is the zero in the enum which is the default means it will wait for space to be available in order to complete the right operation drop right is going to just drop the item which is being written right now which is not the best idea drop oldest we is going to remove the oldest item from the channel drop newest is going to remove the newest item from the channel drop oldest and wait are two of the best possible solution in my opinion so i'm going to go with drop oldest and then for the item dropped as i mentioned item drop delicate that will be called when item is being dropped from the channel so this is going to work out in this full mode because i am saying drop oldest so the oldest item is going to be dropped so in this case you can have a business logic to handle that item appropriately so let's start with that and we can say item and in our case we can just use console dot right line item and that's about it this is how we created a channel now given that channel is something which helps talking between consumer and producer it automatically gives a decoupling in an in-memory application most of the time we achieve out of process communication decoupling through things like stream and queues channel provides in process decoupling between a consumer and producer of data for the data producer what we can do is we can use the writer property of the channel so we can say writer equal to channel dot writer and this is going to give a channel writer object which we are going to use for writing and similarly we can have a reader which is equal to channel dot reader which is going to give a consumer now what we can do is we can create a new task where we are going to continuously read and then inside a for loop we can keep writing and we can show that when we write using the producer the consumer is going to get the data and write it out so for that we can create a reader task and we can say task dot factory dot start new and here inside of this task what we can do is we can use a while loop because we want to continuously read but here instead of using true what we can do is we can check the completion status of the reader and until it is completed it is going to keep reading so we can say reader dot completion and you can see it gets a task that completes when no more data will ever be available to be read from this channel and then dot is completed what we can use so as long as it is not completed we want to read the data so we can say var response is equal to and let's make this an async because we are going to use an await here and here we can do reader dot read async so read async is going to just return the data back 
Instead of read async, there are a couple of other options. One is wait to read async. What is going to happen is we are going to wait until we have a data available. Read all async is another alternative where it is going to return all the data available currently inside of channel. We are just going to go ahead with read async. And then here we can just do console dot right line of response. And after we do that, the next thing we can do is we can create a for loop. And inside of for loop, we can just say 10. And then here we can just say await writer dot. And again, writer also has two options. One is write async and one is wait to write async. Wait to write async again would make sense if we want to wait for the data to be available. So we'll go with write async. There is another method which is try write. And try write will attempt to write. And again, we'll go with write async here. And for the item, we can just say, item i. So that is our write. And after that, I'm just going to do await reader task. And here we can just do a console dot read line. So now if I run this application and let me put a breakpoint here so that when we debug through, we can see exactly how the code is behaving. Because ideally, as and when we run, the write, we should be seeing items getting printed in the read. So we write one, nothing here yet. Now you can see we got one, two, three, three of them. And we got four, five and so on and so forth. And we can see here it printed from zero to nine. So this is a very simple example of how we can use a channel class for creating a producer and consumer to talk to each other asynchronously through a channel. In my next video, I am going to walk through a real life scenario where channel can be used for asynchronous communication between a consumer and a producer. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to this channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.